Hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Must Know 3 PSM Images in 3 Minutes. Before we begin, just a little heads up, we've started a batch for FMG on 7th of July. So if you've still not subscribed to this, you can definitely subscribe and learn from your wonderful educators. You can use my code PSM Live and get a 10% off on your subscription. So the first image for the day, can you all identify which statistical diagram is it? Yes, this statistical diagram over here is a line graph. What does a line graph do? A line graph is used to represent the trends of event, all right? It can represent trends of event over a period of time, over a period of time. What does that mean? It means that the line graph is used to represent the incidence of cases, all right? So over a period of time, how many new cases are being added up, like are being uh, are occurring, like over for COVID from January to July 2021, how many cases of COVID occurred? January me kitta da, February me kitta da. So that is what a line graph does. It represents trends of event over a period of time. This striking feature is that it can increase, it can follow, it can show a dip also. So increase and decrease is always a part of line graph. January may other cases they February were come they or maybe January, February, March it was more April it fell. All right. So that you don't get confused, I've got you another picture. What is this? This is the picture of a cumulative frequency curve. And what is cumulative frequency curve? This cumulative frequency curve is also known as OGI. This is used to represent the reinfection cases. And how do you differentiate cumulative frequency curve from a line graph? It will never show a dip, all right? It never shows a dip. Like if this, uh, suppose we saw somebody suffered from COVID, recovered and again suffered from COVID. So that will add up to the cases. So this represents reinfection cases. It is used to denote and it is denoted by a cumulative frequency curve or OGI. Never it's going to show a dip. Next image. What do you think this is? <clears throat> Is it Sandfly, Anopheles, Aedes or Culex? So here you have to identification of uh, mosquito, adult mosquitoes are very, very important. If you look at this, this mosquito is sitting at an angle of 45 degree and it has spotted wings, okay? So sitting at an angle of 45 degree and having spotted wings is a feature of Anopheles mosquito. How can you distinguish between the different mosquitoes? Look over here. First, look whether it's a hunchback appearance. If you see a hunchback appearance like this and this, okay, the image over here, suppose this is image A, this is B, this is C, this is D. B and D both show a hunchback appearance. But if it is a hunchback appearance, all right, without white stripes on a black body, hunchback appearance without white stripes on a black body. What does this become? Without white stripes on a black body, this one over here, everybody is culex. All right. And hunchback appearance, look at option D. Hunchback appearance hai hai, with white stripes on a black body. Hunchback appearance with white stripes. So with white stripes on a black body, this one over here becomes our ADs. Okay. ADs is also known as tiger mosquito. So this is ADs. Now if you see this one, see if this is a black and brown color, okay, black and brown color, it could be black or brown in color with white shiny bristles on the leg. Look at this, these whitish dots on the leg or you can say white shiny bristles on the leg. This is Mansonia and if None of these features are there. You can make out the angle of sitting is 45 degree and spotted wings over here. So this one becomes our anopheles. Is that all right? I hope you understood this. Just look how the mosquito is sitting. If it's a hunchback appearance with white stripes on a black body, it's Hades. Hunchback appearance without white stripes, it's Culex. 45 degree resting with spotted wings, it's Anopheles. Also, Culex has long legs. And black and brown color, that one's 
your mensonia. What is this? Just so that you don't get confused. These are hairy wings. So hairy wings are seen in what? Hairy wings are seen in sand fly. Now based on the mosquitoes, I'll just tell you, you must remember Anopheles is the one responsible for malaria. All right, then Aedes. Aedes kya kya karata hai? The one which are included in our National Vector Bond Disease Control Program. It causes or it transmits actually dengue and chikungunya. And last but not the least, if we talk about Culex, Culex is responsible for Japanese encephalitis and Culex is also responsible for filariasis. All right, and Sandfly in our National Vector Bond Control Program is responsible for Kala Azar or Leishmaniasis. These are the ones which are included in National Vector Bond Disease Control Program. Coming to the last image for the day, what is this empty glass vial? Where should be it disposed of? It should be disposed in a blue color bag. Any glass vial, whether it's empty, whether it's broken, whether it's a glass light, it's glass so should go in a blue color bag. But if you get something like that, glass vial with cytotoxic medicines, all right, or let's say with expired or you could say discarded cytotoxic medicines, where is this going to go? This is now going to go into a yellow color bag. All right, glassware simply, glass while empty, it's going to go into a blue color bag. But if it has some expired, discarded or some leftover cytotoxic medicine, it's going to go into yellow color bag. So I hope you enjoyed this short video. Thank you so much for watching.